So on to the game. So in your post, you had said that you're stuck in Gold Nova 3, and you're kind of confused why, because you're just you're just killing them every round. Like you're killing it. Like that's like that's a uh, that's how you use a word for us. word what you're saying. First off, I wouldn't suggest only buying a P250 if you're gonna buy a T50 pistol round, but I mean it's not terrible. So one thing I noticed you do a lot is B hop. Um, now I don't want you to take this too harsh, but in a competitive match, you you really shouldn't be B hopping. And this isn't to say B hopping is bad, but the problem is you very clearly are new to B hopping, and B hopping B hopping when you when you can't do it correctly is uh just extremely ineffective because you have to keep in mind that well, let me pause real quick you have to keep in mind that for every b hop you don't hit and it, it's hard to hit every single b hop you're losing speed so you because you need to keep your speed over 250 as well as keeping a small curve in your jumps um and like otherwise there's no point in b hopping in fact it's probably gonna make your game play worse the more you b hop and i also wanted to point out that so you play very recklessly you just kind of you killed first off you killed this guy in apartments uh, I have no idea where I am you killed this guy in apartments your Chrysler placement was kind of there but you were kind of like not even paying attention and you like luckily got that kill and then you came out boiler and didn't even look archway or or even mid for that matter and you just went straight to site so um, and this leads on to a problem um, that I'll explain further on. Again, you sent us a game. You sent you sent r slash uh, CSGO critic a demo in which you stomped, right? So when I give you critiques and it may seem like you're doing the right thing and you think you're doing the right thing, you're just going to have to trust our judgment and saying that it's wrong, right? Because yeah, you guys won, so you're gonna think, well, I won. I did. That, mean, that must be that good things, right? Um, like this specific instance, you got a 3k round, and so obviously right off the bat, you must have been like, that was a great round for me. But even though your mechanical skill as far as aiming and shooting was really good, um, that there's a lot, of, a lot of things wrong with that round. Um, first off, so uh, three kills. Um, I'm not sure how many. I'm not sure how many. Uh, how much money you get for a kill on the Mac 10 but it's definitely not enough because before you win the I don't know you get 3200 or something like that but you definitely hadn't had an at least three hundred and fifty dollars and you didn't buy you didn't buy head armor at all and this is this is getting special first off you need to always buy head armor when you have the opportunity always always Especially when you're T side, CT side. If you're in the if you're in the later rounds, m yeah, maybe you can save that extra 350 if you're really broke and you want to buy an M4 instead of buying head armor. But that's because terrorists can shoot like terrorists will one shot you either way with an AK, so you don't really have to worry too much. But you're on T side where it's really important to have head uh, uh, head armor. Now, lead on to my point. What I was trying to say. So when you went here in this apartment area that first round, you just really tunnel visioned on the side. You completely ignored like this whole area. And here, even though it may not seem quite as apparent, you tunnel visioned just as hard, if not worse. So I'll show you what I mean. Oops. So actually, we're gonna speed this up. Hey, you take your Mac here. Go down B. All right. So this is where this is this is just a normal B push, right? You get this kill onto this guy jumping on top of dark for whatever reason he's doing. Okay. Get that kill. You see that another guy dark, and you and your teammates are getting shot at, and you are getting shot at. So you decide to turn and kill this guy at tree, but just completely expose your body. And you get shot like four to five times right there. 
and then you jump away for a reload, and then you finally close in on this last guy. Now granted, there's not too many ways to handle this situation, because it was a big stack onto the site. There's not too many ways to handle the situation without getting shot, but the fact that you killed that guy, saw another guy dark, and just wide peeked out right here to tree, was really dangerous. Um, because I mean, this guy, this guy right here, I, I mean, yeah, he's he's gonna probably shoot like who uh, I think it was like maybe Juice or something that was just standing right here. Yeah, it was Juice that was standing right here. He's gonna shoot him. But for the most part, the biggest nuisance is gonna be that guy Dark, and you the fact that you guys completely like the fact that you completely ignored him to wide peek out to kill his tree that opened you up to a crossfire from these two guys, and they shot you four to five times in the back, and I. Even, like, I'm not knocking you, because not a lot of people think about this. I really doubt that you consciously made the decision to say, I'm going to just wide peek this because they have pistols. And even if you did, even, gosh, dang it, who is this lawnmower? Anyways, even if you did make that conscious decision, you have to also remember, you don't have a head armor. So even if you said they have pistols, so I'm just going to do it, they're not going to kill me, there was still a chance you could have gotten rocked, because USPs and P2000s, at a normal distance, will instantly kill you with a with one headshot, if you're not having, if you don't have head armor. So, I mean, again, you got the kills, and because you got the kills, it looks like a good round, but really that was like a really, a really unsafe and ineffective way of going about that situation. Um, like, I, I personally think, this is my opinion, I personally think that you should handle the people on site and, uh, clear out site before you start worrying about people attacking site. That's my personal opinion. I mean, you could have killed that guy, but there was, this guy and this guy were a huge priority, and th you could have easily, like, cost this guy's life because you decided to white peak, and you could have dropped... You could have dropped your Mac-10 and lost your armor, which is a lot of money. But luckily, you guys won that one. So, so um, yeah, that's the. There you have a little bit of problem with tunnel visioning, and there's some more problems that I'll get onto eventually. But we're just gonna move on to this ninth round, and this is by far one of the more confusing rounds I watched in this game, um, and. Uh, I think I think it says a lot about the problem that you're having. So to start off, you buy an op, you pick up nades. That's always good. Uh, you buy a Zeus. I mean, sure, no, what whatever you want. Uh, you do spend a you, there are a couple of rounds where you do spend like a good five seconds in spawn, just doing whatever you're doing. I mean. I guess it's not too huge of a problem, but it is. And yeah, shot the smoke. I'll get to a point later on about that. Uh, you screw that flash, flash off. Throw in a flash bag. And then flash peek down here. You see the barrel on that ninja spot. You run towards him with your Tech Nine. Definitely not suggested. I mean, you had a HE grenade. I don't know why you didn't do that. You jump on the cart. You hit that guy. And then, alright, you and your teammates start pushing, and then you peace. You watch Banana with Optic Nade Shot. You come back to trade the kill for the guy that just killed your teammate, and he's already gone. You throw a grenade, and then I think you communicate, or your team communicates with you, that you should probably start looking towards A. You throw a smoke banana, which is, isn't terrible. Start working towards mid. Your teammate gets a kill at Arch. And then you head back banana. And then you wait around here. And you decide, alright, you know what? I don't want the smoke to fade or whatever. And then now you start running A. Checking corners. Your teammate gets another kill at Arch. Start planting. You decide to watch library where your teammate just ran. Teammate dies in library. You take the fight to him, and you win. Again, because you sent us a demo 
where you guys absolutely stomped them, this seemed like a good round. You had an op, you got a 3k and a bomb plan. However, this was fundamentally, as far as conceptual and fundamental Counter-Strike, this was just absolutely like terrible play I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you because I'll be honest with you you're really good at mechanically playing the game you're good at being able to move around correctly point your gun and click mechanically you're really good at this game conceptually um, and as far as like concepts and theory of counter-strike you're very lacking and it's ironic because like this guy named Opic Nate Shot is in your game um, but you are playing in a bit of a Call of Duty sense of style. And I'll explain further, but I don't like looking at a static screen while I go in a lecture, so I'm gonna hop in offline really quick. Alright. Okay, so basically what I want to talk about is, so first off, in that, we're gonna start off with the smaller subjects and then move up in the broader subjects. Um, uh, so we're gonna start off with the fact that you're in that in that ninth round that I was talking about um, you're very indecisive because if you remember you came up banana you had a teammate with you that was pushing here and then I mean you saw a nade come out like right around here or something and then for some reason you just immediately decided to go back banana even though you had a teammate posted up right here and then why you went to banana to post up for some reason your teammate died like right there to a guy on that corner and then he dies you come back of course because like you were like a good second or two away that guy's gone pretty much and you can't trade the kill um you throw a nade like this if you threw this nade like this you could have gotten that kill but anyways that's neither here nor there and then some communication between you and your teammate. I don't know who initiated it. Said, Please just start looking smoke. towards A. Um, I'm thinking maybe it was your teammate because of the way you handled the situation. You guys started working towards A. He got a kill over at Arch. And then the reason why I think maybe he communicated that they, you should go A is because you showed some resistance and just like moved back banana. Maybe just because it's a comfort zone thing for you. And then the smoke was starting to fade and then you started running back towards A. Um, and then teammate gets another kill arch you run over here after checking corners um, you start planting the bomb over here you stop to check archway even though your teammate just ran through it you plant again the guy kills your teammate and you take the fight and you win now there's a lot of things that I want to talk about here but the first thing is that you were in very indecisive um, you kept going back and forth right you're pushing B, you add your op, push with your teammate, and then you decide, you know what, never mind, I can push, I'm gonna go banana. And then your teammate dies, and you're like, you know what, I need to trade that kill. And then, he's gone. So, team communicates, alright, let's go A, you go mid, and then, you think, alright, you know what, I'm gonna go back banana. And the same thing happens, right? So, a lot of the problems with, with, uh, with playing this game, if you, ha especially if you have bomb, like players who aren't very decisive, can lose rounds just by not like doing anything. Um, it's always better to do nothing for reason than to do something for no reason. Is basically the way you want to think about this. So, and we'll get onto a further topic because I am gonna talk about a way to combat that, but it also leads into another problem you have. And so there's like times in this game where while well, you had your op, there was a round where you just bought a scout with seemingly no reason because you had so much money and you were just going for jump scout kills at like balcony. And then you ran down mid with the odd that one time and just shot the smoke. I mean, and granted, jump scouting and shooting through smoke isn't a bad thing, but they're they're to be done for your, for specific contextual reasons rather than just doing it to do it, right? And it seemed to me, especially with all the B hopping, that you were trying to go for like montage clips, right? You were trying to like be the next big star on YouTube or something, and you're just going for like 
really weird angles and shots that were really unfavorable for you, but because you were just stomping these guys, uh, you would win them. And so what the second thing I want to talk about is uh, something I bring up a lot when people say that they're like top fragging every game, but they just can't rank up, is that yeah, you're top fragging, but you're top fragging for all the wrong reasons because you're t you're you're playing the game, you're playing to kill, you're playing to get frags rather than playing to win the round. And this is a problem that a lot of people have. They th they think that this game is about killing the other team, but really as a terrorist the whole idea of the game is to plant that bomb and then have it explode, right? And you were just playing straight for kills. Like, you were an absolute monster this game. You were just tearing them up left and right, and they couldn't stop you. But, and, uh, I mean, it worked. Uh, the, the game was like 16-3 or something. But the reason why you want to be thinking more conceptually about the game is because what if you run into somebody who's just as good as fragging as you? And uh, th I think this is part of the reason why you can't rank up. It's because, I mean, yeah, you're good at, at uh, fragging out. But once you get into, like, two ranks above you, those people are probably going to be able to frag just as well or better than you. So what what do you do in that situation? All right, if you just lose all those gunfights that you usually win, then you pretty much, like, lose the whole game. And so... The point I want to make is that, and these last two points, because this is about combating, in, uh, sorry, combating your indecisiveness and also, um, and also playing for the frags, uh, they kind of mesh together. So the the way you want to, the way you want to go about like not playing, or uh, the reason why you want to go about not playing specifically for the frags is because you are so good. Obviously, you have an ability to be able to just frag out, right? However, you're using it for all the wrong reasons. You're too worried about, like, getting all these really cool shots, but really, if you had just taken the time to push with your team and gotten frags on B site and on A site, like that one Mac 10 round, you absolutely fragged out on a B site, which is what you want, right? Because now you opened up a site. Now if you die, the team has obje has the objective and the CTs have to defuse. So instead of running around looking for like phenomenal kills, you need to be pushing like pushing with your team or helping your team in some way, trading kills, entry fragging, anything. And um and getting those kills that you would like th getting those awesome kills, but for a good reason, right? Like, yeah, if you get a sick kill down mid while your team's pushing B, yeah, it's a cool shot, but ultimately that doesn't affect the round, right? If, if And when it does affect the round, it does it in a very little way, right? Um, like, you can get you can get two sick kills down mid, but if, you're, or if your team are already pushing in a B and they just all get mowed down by a three-person stack, now you're in a 1v3, and... Even if you're really good, the odds are not in your favor for that fight, right? So you need to be playing for more for the objective, and then this is also going to lead into how to combat your indecisiveness, is you just need to start thinking more. It's clear in this game that you were just fragging out, and you were literally playing out of your mind. You were playing so well that you almost autopiloted, and your brain just said, all right, time to frag, time to get the kills. Uh, like, let's just play the game, get the kills, and peace. All right, let's just get our weight. Let's get at the W and then peace out. You're just getting frags left and right. And um, you you just autopiloted and just kept getting kills because that's just, you're good at it. So your mind was just like, all right, let's just start looking for kills because we can get them. And uh, what you need to do in situations where you're running back and forth you need to realize, especially in those clutch situations, and the 3v3s, and the 2v3s, and the 1vx's, you need to be you need to be able to have the ability to stop and think, like, what should I be doing here, and how can I do it, right? In that situation where it was a 2v3, um, or it started off as a 3v3, if you were pushing with your teammate, and you saw a grenade, or you had a feeling that it was a stack because it was. You would think, all right, you know what? I want to go A instead. You communicate with your team and say, all right, I'll, I'm not liking B, right? 
Well, let's say that guy dies anyways. Let's say you come back here for that same reason you did in the game. Your teammate dies, right? You peek back to try and get the trade kill, and then you peace out. Now you should be thinking, what should I do here? You have bomb. Ideally, you want to get the bomb down because that increases your chance of winning, right? Rather than having to kill three people, your chances of winning are increased because all you have to do is let that bomb explode, yeah? So you should be thinking, all right, I need to place this bomb down. You throw the smoke, smoke that you did. You start working towards A with your teammate. And then your teammate gets the kill at Arch. And now you should be thinking, all right, well, my teammate just got that kill. What should I be doing? I should be clearing site and getting that bomb down because now we're in a 2v2. And then you should be on site. Your teammate gets that second kill. And then you should be saying, all right, I need to be planting the bomb and putting myself in 